I find the idea of searching for the perfect knitting pattern for the design that I have in my head super overwhelming. And this is made more challenging because I already have a specific yarn that I have that I want to use. So this week, I'm doing what I do best in a situation like this, and that is design my own pattern. I'm gonna be showing you my process of knitting this little pixie style bonnet and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to apply the concepts and knit your own pixie bonnet with any yarn for any head size. This bonnet knitting project is part of my current autumn winter capsule lookbook project, which is why I'm making it in this bright mustard yellow. And the idea of making a bonnet is primarily inspired by this image right here, but it's Instead of making a fitted helmet slash balaclava, I felt like making a pixie style bonnet would be cuter because that boing boing pointy thing at the top is what makes it cute. <laughs> and just between you and me, I have this weird insecurity about the shape of my head. I feel like maybe I slept on the back of my head for too long when I was a baby. So I'm keeping the design of this pixie style bonnet pretty simple and straightforward. I want 1.5 inches worth of one by one ribbing around the neck. I want the body to be knitted in stockinette stitch to really show off the beauty of this yarn and the color of this yarn. Um, it's gonna be knitted flat and then we're gonna have the top bound off. And then we're gonna have one by one ribbing once again going around um, my face and some kind of tie that I wanna fashion under the chin. I haven't quite kind of decided on how it's gonna look. We're just gonna get started and see how we go. So to make this pixie style bonnet, we're going to start by taking measurements of our head. First and most importantly, we need to figure out the length around the back of my head. So over here, I've got my measuring tape and I've got the start of the measuring tape right in front of my ear. And then I am dragging the measuring tape around the back of my head and I end it right in front of my other ear. This measurement is crucial for deciding how many stitches we need to cast on to knit the bonnet. The next measurement, which actually isn't super compulsory, is the height of the bonnet. So over here, I've got the measuring tape wrapped around my face, and then I took off the distance under my chin. And then with that value, I divided it by two to figure out how long I needed to do the stockinette stitch before I start thinking about whether it's time to cast off. This is going to make a lot more sense when we get to that step, so hang on tight. So at this stage, I feel like I need to start winding the yarn up into a ball. I don't have a yarn winder, so I'm just going to do it like in a makeshift way, which isn't too bad because it's not a lot of yardage anyway. So I've got a toilet paper roll and I'm just going to kind of like gently and skillfully wind it around to make a center pull scheme ball of yarn. I think I'm supposed to cut this. <laughs> oh, this is the beginning of the yarn. Like where the knot was, that's the beginning of the yarn. Okay, and I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna kind of like hold it in the middle so I remember where the center is. And I'm gonna make sure that I cover like the entire roll from top down. So I'm just going up and down the roll and just kind of making sure that I cover the entire length before I go along the opposite direction again. So this went well for like a moment and then as the ball of yarn started getting bigger, I felt like I needed some kind of tool to help me with the process. Like I just kind of know I need some kind of like stopper at the bottom so I could wrap the yarn around it without it falling off the ball, if you know what I mean. Honestly, I thought I was some kind of genius thinking about this idea of using the ruler to help me to hold the yarn. But towards the end, I wasn't even sure if it actually helped by a big amount. <laughs> 
And then I had to wind the other end of the yarn up into a little ball as I went along to make sure that all the strands didn't continue to tangle up more. This whole idea of winding a center pool ball of yarn really took a lot more effort than I thought it would, but I did end up getting a cute little pumpkin ball of yarn and the toilet paper roll really helped to serve as a good landmark for me to remember where the beginning of the yarn is. It is now time for me to knit a swatch and basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be knitting a little square piece of material and with that, it's going to help me to figure out how many stitches it's going to take for me to get a certain um, length of material and how many rows it's going to take for me to get a certain height of material. The yarn actually calls for a 9 to 10 mm needle and I have decided on using my 10 mm needles to do most of the knitting. To make my swatch, I cast it on 10 stitches and knitted about 14 rows of stockinette stitch. Depending on your choice of yarn and needle size, the number of stitches that you need to cast on will be a little different, but the concept is that you want a swatch size that's about 3 by 3 inches big so that you get a nice average gauge of your knitting tension. So I really like how the swatch is looking so far. I love that within each row, you can actually see like a gradient in color because of the way that this yarn is dyed. And there's also an evenness in the size of the stitches, which is another like kind of like a quirky, cute thing about this yarn because the strand isn't evenly sized throughout. Also, knitting hot tip, even though I was knitting in stockinette stitch, I always did a knit stitch for the first and last stitch of every row just so that my swatch piece would be flanked by knit stitches and it won't actually curl on the sides even without blocking. And you know what the thing about expensive yarns is? First of all, I don't buy expensive yarns very often and secondly, I, I mean, just same as expensive fabrics. I just always have this fear of me actually regretting what I've decided to make with the, the material, either the fabric or the yarn. But I want to learn to kind of just embrace that uncertainty and fear and really just soak up the joy of creating, of making something. And now I'm going to start casting off and start doing some measurements. Based on my measurement, 7 stitches gave me 3 inches and 10 rows of stockinette stitch is 2.75 inches long. Okay, so it's time to do some math. Now, based on my gauge, seven stitches gave me three inches. And since the length around the back of my head is 11.5 inches, it means that I have to cast on a certain number of stitches to give me 11.5 inches worth of work. And to figure out how many stitches that would be, I took 11.5, divided it by 3 inches and then multiplied that by 7 stitches and I got 26.8333333 stitches but then I rounded it up to 27 which is an odd number because I wanted to do one by one ribbing which requires an even number of stitches but just like I did with my swatch, I wanted the start and end of every row to be a knit stitch. And for that to happen, we need an odd number of stitches. So to make this pixie style bonnet, I cast it on 27 stitches and I started off by knitting one by one ribbing on a smaller pair of needles and for this case, I used my 9mm needles. And like I said, I did a knit stitch for the first and last stitch of every row. I continued knitting in this pattern until the ribbing was about 1.5 inches long. Then I switched to my actual needle size, which is my 10 mm needles, and I started working in stockinette stitch, meaning knitting for every single row on the right side and then purling on the wrong side. But remember, just like before, I did a knit stitch for the first and last stitch of every single row, regardless of whether it's a knit row or a purl row. 
So I've been knitting for a while and this is how it's looking so far. I really like how the stitches are coming along and the most exciting thing is how the yarn cake is pretty much still holding on to its shape. It hasn't quite collapsed yet. So this is just standard basic stockinette stitch. I'm gonna finish this row right here and then what I'm gonna do is head out and knit this in the sunshine. So I have actually made quite a bit of progress with the bonnet. I have about 11 inches worth of work right now, which is a couple of inches more than what I thought I would have to knit to get the size that I want based on my initial measurements. But in thinking about it right now, it makes sense because based on my initial measurements, my bonnet would end up being quite a bit of a snug fit. But after kind of like putting it against my head and looking at it in front of the mirror, I decided that I want it to be a little longer just so that it's a little bit of like a looser fit. Not super loose, but just not snug. Okay, so now I have about 12 inches worth of work from bottom to the top and it's looking so much better. I'm gonna show you how it looks. So if I were to bind off the top together like this, this is how it looks. Yay, definitely more room here. And the idea is that it's supposed to have that little pointy tip like I mentioned. So I'm gonna do a three needle bind off right now and then I'm gonna start knitting the ribbing around uh, the bonnet here. Before starting my three needle bind off, I made sure that I ended my work on the wrong side, meaning the next row would have been a knit row on the right side of the bonnet. When I did my three needle bind off the first time, I was using a 6.5 mm needle as my third needle because I don't know why. <laughs> I think I was lazy and it was just like within reach. But then with that needle, my bind off actually ended up being a little tighter than I wanted it to be. So I had to undo everything and did it all over again and this time with the 12 mm needle. I just don't have a third 10 mm needle. Anyway, this worked out so much better and the bind of edge ended up looking a lot better the second time. Now this part here is crucial. After binding off, make sure you put the bonnet on your head and know that you absolutely love the way that it's fitting before you cut the yarn because the moment we cut the yarn, it is game over and we cannot go back. And now it's time to start picking up the stitches around the opening of the bonnet for the one by one ribbing around the face. This part of picking up stitches can be a little tricky. I'm gonna try my best to explain it. So basically, I picked up one stitch between every single strand along the knitted edge of the bonnet. So you see these little loops between the little strands? Every single loop represents a stitch that I've picked up. So I picked up one stitch in every single space, but I skipped only just one space throughout the entire edge just so that I could end up with an odd number of stitches for me to do my one by one ribbing just like I did with the base of the bonnet. Another hot tip right here, for the bonnet to have a nice edge, you want to make sure that the first and last stitch that you're picking up is right on the edge of the bonnet. The number of stitches that you want to pick up and whether you want to be skipping spaces at all, it depends on the final style and look of the bonnet that you want. So at the end of the video, I'm actually going to be talking a little bit more about modifying this pattern for a different a bonnet style. So look out for that. I think this is it. This is how it looks like right now. <laughs> look! <laughs> I'm going to do a bind off over here. And then I'm gonna fashion some kind of tie and then I'm gonna show you how it looks. Okay, this is not it. I'm kind of indecisive about how I actually want to finish it, but one thing that I know for sure is that I definitely don't want my original idea of having the ties right on the tip right here and then tying it like this. I don't like how the overall shape is looking but what i do like is perhaps you see how where the ribbing ends over here having maybe a hook and eye sewn over here and then wearing it this way 
I like how this looks. Mm, so I'm thinking about the idea of making a tie through here, just like one long string and a pom-pom on each end. So when I wear it loose like this, the pom-pom also um, act as a stopper and prevent the, the tie from, from getting loose. And then when I tie it up, it's going to be a little bow with pom-poms at the end because pom-poms are cute, right? Yes. So when I talked about making a pom-pom at the end of the ties, I didn't mean making a pom-pom with a traditional pom-pom maker like this. Because what I've noticed about this yarn is that the very core of the strand is not dyed all the way through. It actually looks pretty white. So if I were to make a pom-pom the traditional way, it's gonna have like a whitish look to it. So instead of using like a regular pom-pom maker, I'm gonna make a little ball by rolling the strand up into a ball and then felting it. This is all the yarn that I've got left from that one single hank that I started with. And I'm trying not to get started on this one. So I'm going to have to make the tie with just this much yarn, hopefully. So right now what I'm trying to figure out is how long I want the tie to be. I want the loop of the bowl to be about this long and then the tail at the end to be about this long. So it looks like this. It means the tie has to be this long. So this is about 10 inches. And when I multiply by two, it's 20 inches. And I'm gonna do a long single crochet chain of 20 inches. I'm gonna leave a little tail at the end so I could kind of make it in a ball and make a little felt pom-pom ball. So this crochet chain here is about 20 inches long and I'm gonna loop it through from the inside through to the outside where I want the ties to be, which is at the top of the bottom row of ribbing. So I am just done with felting my first pom-pom. It's kind of looking like something a cat's thrown up. So what I'm going to do next is, uh, I'm taking this little scrap piece of yarn, I'm going to fluff it up a little bit more, and then I'm going to take this piece and wrap it around the ball so that the exterior of the ball looks a bit smoother, I guess. So this little pixie bonnet knitting pattern did not go as I originally planned because it turned out way better. So the pom-poms function exactly as I thought they would. They act as like a little stopper. So when I actually pull on the tie, it doesn't come out of the bonnet. Oop, I have a strand of hair here. <laughs> Felting worked really well with this yarn because it's made of 100% merino wool. And um, instead of doing like a usual weave-in and fabric glue that I usually do with my um, fiber craft projects. I also decided to felt the, the yarn tail ends that I've weaved in. Um, but when felting, I also made sure that I was only felting the wrong side of the bonnet and that the felted texture wouldn't show up on the right side. I think the point at which I decided to do my three needle cast off was the perfect height of the bonnet and it gave that cute little boing boing little pointy thing at the the top of the pixie style bonnet and that's actually like the key part of the design that I was hoping to create with this bonnet. I decided to crochet this tie because I think knitting an eye cord is just pure torture and it would have probably turned out like way chunkier than this um, foundation chain strand. In terms of styling, I think there are two main ways which I will be wearing this bonnet either open like this which I think has more of like a cottage core kind of a vibe because it looks just more like a hood or just tied under my chin like this. 
I need to figure out what to do with the hair. But a lot of like Pinterest photos that I've seen, they usually have like, oh, nice wavy hair framing the face. So I did kind of curl my hair for this part of the video. Um, so either just like this, or with the bow and and I was actually able to finish everything with just like one single hank of the wool and I have one more left and I don't know what to do with it but that's a problem for another day now let's talk a little bit about modifications oh you know what I can wear it as a hood like that too oh my gosh this is cool. I love it. So talking about modifications. See, the thing is every new design is really just a variation of another design. And in sharing my projects and patterns here on this channel, I really want to be able to inspire you to make modifications to it and then make something that is truly your own. So I've talked about the ribbing going around my face. You can see how my bonnet has a pretty relaxed fit around the face but if you want something that's kind of more like a super snug fit and you want like a like something that looks like this framing around your face then you have to pick up fewer number of stitches around the bonnet so instead of picking up a stitch within every space then perhaps you want to consider skipping a stitch every five or seven space it's an arbitrary number that I just pulled out of my head because it really depends on the type of yarn that you're using and how snug you want the fit to be. So you might have to do a little bit of experimentation and just cast off and knit the ribbing and then decide if you want to rip it all back and make it tighter or looser. And then in terms of this one by one ribbing, um, which is a nice standard basic design, how about making ruffles around the face either ruffles or a scalloped edge those are my like top two like cute design feature to add on to a basic standard design also instead of having a tie over here and a little bowl like i decided to do perhaps you could also cast on more stitches around here and then knit like a long piece and have it turn into a scarf going around your neck so if you want to knit this little pixie bonnet and you want a quick review of the steps of construction and all the knitting tips and tricks that I've shared, then definitely check out the write-up that I have on my blog. The link to that is in the description box. And you can also see some extra photos of the bonnet as well. I'm so excited to be working on my autumn winter capsule lookbook once again and sharing my design, my process and styling ideas with you. So if you want to check out projects and looks that I've put together from from this capsule definitely check out the playlist don't forget to subscribe click the like button for this video leave a comment just say hi or tell me what you like about this video and i will see you in the next one <laughs> bye